The Magic School Bus in the Arctic, written by Joanna Cole and illustrated by Bruce Stegan. Miss Frizzle is the weirdest teacher in the school. Strange things always seem to happen in her class, but it had gotten to be so cold outside not even Miss Frizzle could do anything too unusual. Or so we thought. It all started in the cafeteria where Arnold ordered a steaming cup of hot cocoa with marshmallows. By the time he took his first sip, the heat had escaped out an open window. Arnold was left with yucky cold cocoa. Where did all the hot go? he asked. That's when Mrs. Frizzle got the snowy sparkle in her eyes. The next thing we knew, we were on the magic school bus, but now it had skis and tractor treads instead of tires. We were traveling through one of the coldest places on earth, the Arctic, and we didn't even have our coats on. Miss Frizzle pressed a button and jackets dropped from the top of the bus, but they were too thin to keep us warm. And while Fritz was searching for the warm jacket button, she drove the bus into deep ice cold water. When we got to the other side, the bus was dripping with ice and the engine was frozen. Then the bus stopped and we were stuck in the Arctic. We had to figure out a way to warm up the bus and get back home. We were cold, but poor Liz was freezing. Liz is cold-blooded. She gets most of her heat from outside her body, explained Phoebe. Don't worry, Liz, she said. I'm warm-blooded. My heat is your heat. Just then, Wanda pulled out an old wooden trunk from under a seat. Inside, we found a bunch of goggles. Miss Frizzle said they were heat peepers. It was amazing. When we put them on, we could actually see the heat moving out of our bodies. Moving heat must mean losing heat, said Phoebe. We could see the heat escaping right out of the top of the bus. The heat was escaping fast and they needed a heat source. Luckily, Arnold found some wood inside the old trunk. In no time, a fire was burning and Miss Frizzle was cheerfully brewing hot lemon water tea. The wood didn't last long, so we broke another wooden trunk into pieces. Out fell some hot water bottles. Miss Frizzle poured tea into a hot water bottle. With our heat peepers, we could see the heat going into it. Carlos tucked the bottle inside his jacket and he felt warmer right away. Arnold looked at the other hot water bottles on the ground. What if we cover the engine of the bus with hot water bottles, he suggested. The heat from the bottles will move into the engine, the engine will warm up, and the bus will start and we can go home. It was a good idea, but it was too late. Just then, the ice we were standing on cracked into pieces. The bus floated away, and so did Ralphie and Phoebe, and Liz! We have to save Ralphie and Phoebe, but we were freezing. Look, said Carlos, the heat from my hot water bottle is almost gone. We have to find something else to keep ourselves warm, Arnold said. He looked at Dorothy Ann's book. We could use that! Arnold started to rip out pages from the book and stuff them inside his jacket. I hate to hurt a book, but this is an emergency. Putting this paper between us in the cold air might keep the heat from escaping, Arnold explained. The paper did slow down the loss of heat a little bit. Miss Frizzle said the paper was acting like insulation. It was holding in the heat, but we still needed a better heat source if we were going to save the bus and get home. There's a fur coat and a heat source due north of here, said the Frizz. Follow me. Miss Frizzle was right. This heat source was warm, furry, and smelled like fish. Suddenly, we got it. This was no ordinary heat source. This was a polar bear. Run, said Carlos. Hide, said Tim. Oh bad, oh bad, oh bad, said Keisha. Miss Frizzle came to the rescue. She whipped out the porter shrinker and zap. We were as small as a bee's knees. We whirled into the bear's fur. We were tiny but warm. We could see the heat coming out of the polar bear's body and getting trapped by its thick, tangled fur. The fur kept in the heat, just like the paper under our jackets kept our body heat. Suddenly, our polar bear got itchy. We tried to hang on, but we couldn't. It was time to make tracks. Back on the bus, Phoebe and Ralphie were pretty cold. Phoebe searched the bus for blankets, but when she reached inside the blanket compartment, she came out with a handful of gloopy blubber. 
What kind of blanket is this? asked Phoebe. It's a fat blanket, said Ralphie, looking through his heat peepers, and it sure can keep in the heat. Suddenly, the bus tipped dangerously. Ralphie and Phoebe looked out and saw walruses trying to climb onto the ice floe. Is it just me, or are those walruses floating in freezing cold water without losing much body heat? Phoebe asked. And they don't have thick fur like the polar bears either. I bet all that blubber in their bodies traps their heat, just like the fat on your hand, Ralphie said. If it's good enough for a walrus, it's good enough for us, said Phoebe. Then she and Ralphie covered themselves from head to toe in gloopy fat. But Phoebe and Ralphie weren't out of cold water yet. Their ice floe was breaking apart, and we couldn't reach them. But we have to save them, said Keisha. We won't last in that icy water, said Dorothy Ann. Never fear, said the Frizz. Where there's a Liz, there's a way. She gave a whistle and called out, Hit it, Liz! Liz ran into the bus and pulled a lever on the dashboard. Suddenly, the roof of the bus opened and something came flying across the water right at us. We've been blubbered! We swam for the bus, warm in our blubber suits. We were glad to be back together, but we still had to find a way to warm up the bus so we could get back home. We tried exercising. The heat escaping from our bodies melted the fat and warmed up the bus for a while. Then the heat escaped out to the top of the bus. We need something to trap the heat and keep it inside, Arnold said. Luckily, the bus had special igloo building equipment, so we built an igloo around the bus to trap escaping heat. Miss Frizzle explained that the snow on the igloo can trap heat because snow is filled with tiny air pockets. The heat moves into these air pockets and gets blocked. As soon as our igloo was built, we went back to exercising. It was a big workout. The heat from our bodies was kept inside the igloo so the bus started to warm up. Before you could say, jumping jack, the engine was ready to go, and we put the blubber on the road. We were just in time. Miss Frizzle turned the bus into a helicopter and got us out there just before the ice floe broke into tiny pieces. Back at home, Arnold ordered another nice mug of hot cocoa, but this time he wasn't going to let the heat escape. He wrapped up his drink in a homemade, double-layered, zipper-lidded, quilted cocoa cozy. Well, as Miss Frizzle always says, ah, the inspiration of insulation.